hey, hey, happy Monday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again for a brand new week as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com. I see Dan from No Enemies Here has been hanging out in chat, waiting for the show to start. Thanks for joining me once again, Dan. Tonight is episode 288 of The Daily Dope. It is a live stream. It is a very casual show. If you are watching live, do you want to point out there is chat available on YouTube? It is not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the stranger commenters at bay. But I do pay attention to the chat. So if you want to say howdy, or if you have a question, or maybe you want to get a better look at something or have a question about Fallout Wasteland Warfare, which I will be unboxing and taking a first look at in just a few moments, then by all means, chime on in. I will respond. If you watch the video, you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you dig those, please subscribe. Don't forget to ring that little bell because that will actually not only notify you when there's a new video up, but will also tell you when the stream goes live within about five minutes or so. And of course, tell a friend, tell a friend not only about the Gaming Gang channel here on YouTube, but thegaminggang.com as well, because there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make it on the show that is on the website as well. So, uh, crazy day so far. So I changed up the lighting a little bit. Uh, Tried to mess around with the lighting over the weekend. Uh, uh, you know, when, when I wasn't, you know, celebrating Easter, <laughs> but messing around with the lighting a little bit, try to get the, the lighting to be a little more natural and, uh, also was working on the lighting to get rid of some of the, uh, glare that we tend to get when we are taking a look at, uh, game reviews or doing unboxings, things like that. So I've played around with some things. I think I've got it where it's uh, halfway decent. So we will find out shortly. So, today is Monday, April 22nd. Happy Earth Day, everybody. I love the Earth. It's the only home I've got, so I've got to love it. So I actually do my part a little bit. I try to do a little bit of a part to uh, help the planet, too. Which, uh, I'll go into stores and I'll buy stuff, which, in Illinois they just hand you plastic bags. It's not like you're in California where it's like, oh, it's a nickel or a dime if you want a plastic bag. So a lot of times I run into a store, maybe I'm getting a couple of two liter bottles of soda or something and they'll start to put it in my bag and I'm like, no, 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 don't put them in the bag. Save the plastic trees. Don't need to put that in there. So anyway, uh, as I mentioned tonight, I am unboxing and taking a first look at Fallout Wasteland Warfare, which uh, Modifius Entertainment was kind enough to send along to me. I did have something else originally planned on last Friday's show, but when Wasteland Warfare showed up on Saturday, I was like, oh yeah, I want to crack this open, take a look at this. And uh, I know my nephew Cameron is going to be very, very excited by this game. So I do have a little bit of news today. Not a ton, just a couple of news stories that uh, kind of yeah, kind of caught my eye. And amazingly enough, they're both role-playing game related news stories. So first off, do want to point out that Necrotic Gnome Games is in the midst of a very successful Kickstarter to bring old school essentials to the masses. And I've got the dope. A modular adventure game in the tradition of the beloved 1980s role-playing rules. 100% old school rules, 100% modern design. Old School Essentials is an adventure role-playing game of exploration, danger, monsters, and magic. The game is intentionally rules light, putting the focus of play on imagination, improvisation, and fun. 
The rules are optimized for ease of use at the table with meticulous attention to wording and layout clarity. What's more, Old School Essentials is 100% compatible with the classic basic slash expert game from 1981, meaning that decades of adventure are at your fingertips. This game is the culmination of over two years of painstaking, passion-fueled work and represents creator Gavin Norman's vision of his personal dream RPG. So, what's being produced? Old School Essentials comes in two forms, a chunky tome and a modular box set. The content is identical. Choose one or both depending on your preferred format. The Old School Essentials Black Box, a game box containing five deluxe sewn bind A5 digest size hard cover rule books, boy, that's a mouthful, presenting the complete rules of the game and everything you need to run games in the classic fantasy genre. Then there's the Old School Essentials Rules Tome, a deluxe all-in-one sound binding A5 digest sized hardcover tome containing the complete rules of the game and everything you need to run games in the classic fantasy genre. Right now, the project is nearly 600% funded, and you can reserve a copy of the tome or separate rule books in PDF for an $11 pledge. You can get the physical rules tome for a $28 pledge or the physical black box that has the five booklets for a $56 pledge all through May 12th. Expected delivery for both the PDFs as well as the physical copies is actually this October. So pretty sweet. So, hey, Paul Nolan's popping in. Good to see you, Paul. Thanks for joining me. Have to say, I am familiar with the BX Essentials, which is what Necrotic Games, or I should say Necrotic Gnome Games, was uh, was working on, had released as separate PDFs. So I happen to get a peek at them, and they were really good. If you are a BX fan of old school Dungeons and Dragons, because that's essentially what this is. Essentially, this is B slash X, or BX as some people refer to it, but very nicely done, very clearly presented. But uh, I do want to point out, this is not new. These, This is the, like, like not a kind of rehash of the basic and expert rules. It is essentially the basic and uh, expert rules just rewritten and with modern sensibilities. So, but uh, as I as I pointed out, I saw the BX Essentials and these were really, really good. All right, so my second news piece, like I said, I only got two tonight. The eagerly anticipated Dragons Conquer America is now available in PDF. I've got the dope. A map tattooed on a piece of old skin has been found by your group's leader. It points toward the Coyote or Coatly? Coatly stone? I don't know. A mysterious artifact that is said to procure inconsummeasurable power to whoever owns it. You've seen the map with your own eyes and have a good idea where it leads to. The temptation to go rogue is strong, and you succumb to it. Will you and your partners in crime reach the temple where the stone is held and get hold of it before your boss's army finds out about the treason? What is Dragons Conquer America? Well, I was just talking about episode zero, the Coatly Stone, and the, the stone, I'm just gonna say stone, is the file you can download absolutely free. It's a free introductory package for Dragons Conquer America, a new setting that Burning Games has created. This episode serves as a prologue to the setting and as a way to playtest the mechanics. It's also a way to raise awareness for Dragons Conquer America. So what is Dra Dragons Conquer America? It, aka DCA, is a living fantasy role-playing setting that is currently, well, it was under development. Now it is pretty much finished. Dragons, magic, what's going on here? Even though we take into consideration real-world events and cultures, DCA is a fantasy setting. Magic is real and used in everyday life, and fantastic beasts, such as dragons and feathered serpents, exert true influence in societies. 
The magical elements will find their way to the mechanics of the game, and you, as a player, will be able to perform awesome supernatural deeds. Dragons Conquer America uses the RPC engine, a cinematic and agile system that allows players to manage their luck. So there are currently now three releases available for Dragons Conquer America. You've got the free 110 page quick start PDF. There's also the 426 page core rule book. Plus there's the new Dawn campaign PDF, which I've got a little info about that too. The two campaigns featured in this book are the perfect companions to the core book. Each campaign will focus on a different group of characters from very different backgrounds to introduce you to the sheer diversity of adventures you can experience in Dragons Conquer America. The Eight Omens is the first of the two campaigns and it will place you in the roles of a group of soon to be sacrificed prisoners. I hate when that happens. Your mission will be to interpret the omens in the netherworld and warn the Mexica Empire of the impending arrival of the Spaniards. The Conquistador's Gold is the second of the campaigns, and in it you will play as a group of Spaniards who must secure the bounty known as, you guessed it, the Conquistador's Gold. Each campaign is designed to last for 8 to 12 sessions and includes everything you need to play it. Pre-gen characters, a full rundown of NPCs and pieces of gear, and even a GM guide to help you track your player's progress. All of these releases are available at DriveThruRPG with the free 110-page Quick Start, the 426-page Core Book, which is $29.95, and the New Dawn Campaign Companion for $19.95. Gotta say, this is one of the role-playing games that's coming out this year that I was really intrigued about because the game is actually set in Mesoamerica, and it's during the Age of Discovery. So, or actually a little before the Age of Discovery. So pretty cool, pretty cool. So Dan over at No Enemies Here asks, what's the difference between old school role-playing games and today's role-playing games? So let me, uh, let me finish up and then I'll kind of explain that really quickly. So anyway, I was just gonna say, uh, Dragons Conquer America looks really interesting. Uh, it looks very unique. And I am definitely going to check out the quick start, the free 110 page quick start. So as I mentioned, it, they are available over at drive-thru RPG. Of course, the gaming gang is an affiliate of drive-thru RPG. So if you are going to swing over to any of the one bookshelf sites, such as even Wargame Vault, please stop by the gaminggang.com, click on one of our banners. Up top, we do have the drive through RPG banners, and then down at the bottom of the page, I now have the uh, Wargame Vault banner for folks to go to. Uh, if you click on those and go to the sites, if you happen to make a purchase, I get a little portion of that, and those all really add up to really, really help me to uh, stick around, <laughs> really. I, I say it all the time, you know, it's like, you know, 10, 15 cents, sometimes it's a nickel, depending on what you're getting. It all adds up though. And uh, most months, my uh, my residual, well, it's not residuals, it's my, I guess I'll say my commissions from the drive through sites actually pay for the hosting of the website. And I do not have cheapo hosting. So Dan, to answer your question, the way I kind of summarize like old school renaissance some people call it old school revival. There's all different. It's old school, whatever you want to start with an R, basically. Uh, the way modern games are set up now is they're very, very plot driven. Uh, stories are kind of laid out and there isn't a whole lot of, there's free will, but there's a lot of railroading that goes on, even though like say fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, yeah, you know, Wizards of the Coast isn't going to say, oh, no, yeah, this adventure doesn't railroad anybody. Well, yeah, it sort of does, because you've got, if the players do this, this happens. If the players do something else, beats the hell out of me, <laughs> you know, the, with the printed modules. So everything is pretty much laid out. There's rules for everything. Whereas old school, with the, the old... D&D &D mainly is what's considered old school. 
is more about rulings as opposed to rules. It's more about the the cleverness of the players as opposed to the abilities of the player characters. So you find uh, with like old school role playing games, character people create their characters. There isn't like loads and loads of backstory and all this other stuff. No, because they'll get all that backstory from the adventures because the adventures tend to be pretty wide open. Uh, there's a lot more combat in modern games. There's a lot more balancing in modern games, which I'm not necessarily a huge fan of. Sort of like, well, you know, if we're second level characters, you know, we should, you, you could run into anything in the world, right? Now, well, newer games, it's not. It's all about challenge ratings and balancing stuff so it's not too hard for the group, but not too easy for the group. So uh, Paul says, old school, very much more open world. Yep. Yeah, a lot less linear. So, uh, so yeah, so that's why I'm a fan of old school Renaissance games. And I, I've kit bashed my own fantasy system that I've been playing with, uh, <laughs> with my nephew and some of his friends and his girlfriend now. And Elliot, my best friend Elliot Miller's popped in for some, some adventures. So we've been having a blast, uh, and it's uh, it's kind of funny because they they weren't expecting that. They were all expecting like fifth edition D and D, and it's not. It's like every monster is not necessarily trying to kill you, but you better be smart because uh, the uh, fatality levels in old school games are much higher than modern games. You're not you're not like super superheroes right off the bat in old school games, whereas, you know, nowadays it's pretty much. Yeah, you're you're kind of the hero already of a novel. There is no build up. There's there's no Bilbo starting out in the Shire kind of thing. So anyway, all right, before I jump into the unboxing for Fallout Wasteland Warfare, let me talk about what's coming up later this weekend, actually into next. So on tomorrow's show, I will be reviewing City of Gears from Gray Fox Games. So that's on tomorrow's show. Now on Wednesday's show, I may not have a live show because my mom is actually coming in from Arizona. She's supposed to be coming in tomorrow night. And she's uh, she's looking at moving back here to the Chicagoland area. So she's going to be in for a few days. But uh, I was thinking of maybe going out to dinner with her on Wednesday because I haven't seen her in a while. So what I was thinking of doing is I might pre-record Wednesday's show ahead of time and just post it as a video. But on Wednesday's show, I am going to be unboxing Empire of the Sun, the Pacific War, 1941 and 1945 from my friends over at GMT Games. Yes, Paul Nolan says, the days of the magic user starting with two hit points. Sometimes one. Sometimes it was one because a lot of times uh, the magic users, would their hit points were uh, 1d4. So if you rolled that four-sided die and got a one, Bob the Mage had one hit point. It's like, oh, sneeze too hard. Bob, we barely knew you. So then on Thursday's show, I will be reviewing the Starfinder Beginner Box, which I just had done an unboxing for a couple weeks back. A week and a half ago, I guess we'll say. So everybody knows on Thursdays, I like to do RPG stuff. So I will be reviewing that. Then on Friday's show, I was originally going to do this on today's show. I will be reviewing Forum Trajanum from Stronghold Games, yes. So I already have stuff planned into next week. So on next Monday's show, I will be reviewing Tiny Towns from my friends over at AEG. Yes, Tiny Towns is a uh, little town construction game. Kind of interesting, yes, Paul Nolan says, one hit point, one spell. Yes, in, in fact, if we go really old school, the clerics, first level clerics didn't even get a spell. I wonder if people remember that. And then on Tuesday's show next week, I will be reviewing Wildlands from Osprey Games. This is the Martin Wallace miniatures game that, uh, once again, this was uh, an unboxing I did. Uh, that was about two weeks ago. 
So that will be uh, what we've got cooking on this week's shows as well as into next week's shows. So as I like to point out, the gaming gang and thus the Daily Dope are not for profit endeavors. So if you happen to enjoy the show, if you like the website, please consider going over and making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Lil Bub's Big Fund actually provides grant monies to organizations that care for special needs pets who are awaiting adoption. They're awaiting finding their forever homes. So, and these animals might require medication daily. They might have mobility issues. They might be older. They could be blind. They could be deaf. They have special needs. They may have odd genetic uh, abnormalities like Lil Bub does. But regardless, these animals do deserve a loving home. And I guarantee you, if you do adopt pets from a shelter, regardless if they're special needs or not, they repay you that love you give them in spades. So I always like to point out, if you dig the show, if you like the website, please consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fun. All right, so we are going to be taking a first look at Fallout Wasteland Warfare, the two-player starter set. This is from Modifius Entertainment and Bethesda Game Studios, which Bethesda is always changing up their name for some reason. They used to be Bethesda Software, then they were Bethesda Softworks. I thought they were still Bethesda Softworks, but no! Now they are Bethesda Game Studios. This is designed by James Sheehan. The game is for one or two players, ages 14 and up, plays in one to two hours. This does carry an MSRP of $77.99. So let's move on over to the other camera because I've got it sitting right here. We're going to be taking a peek at this and it includes a bonus alien. Ooh, look at that. So this uh, this came out, I want to say, towards the end of last year. Let's get this shrink wrap off here. But as far as availability in the U.S., kind of kind of difficult to get your hands on, as far as I understand. So this actually came from the U.K. So Modifius Entertainment was kind enough to send me this. Uh, and it shipped from the UK because I don't think distributors had it uh, available here in the US. So I'm not sure, I am not positive, but let's take a peek here. If you are a fan of Fallout, this is definitely something that uh, that people are gonna want to check this out. So uh, Paul Nolan says, has the board game, but not this yet. So we're gonna take a look at this. There's a couple of things that I have heard that I am going to point out about this as well. So it says, start off, give you a little flavor text from the back. War. War never changes. Yeah, I remember that. Isn't, wasn't that um, in Fallout 3, uh, the, uh, the voiceover is from, oh gosh. I've met him too. He played at Hellboy. Huh. Oh, hey, so Slade Wilson's popping in. Hi, Slade. Welcome aboard for a first timer. I'm here because of your review, your review of Forbidden Lands, subbed and liked. Thank you, Slade. Forbidden Lands is great. I really enjoyed it. Uh, there are some people I've heard reviewing it who really dislike it, but I think they're just not used to, you know, the old school vibe. So anyway, um, jumping back into this, I know I'm going to think of his name. Um, he was on Sons of Anarchy. Jeez, I can't believe I can't remember his name. But he did the voiceover in the beginning. War. War never changes. In the ashes of civilization, factions of humanity struggle against horrific creatures, irradiated wastes, and human nature itself. Grab your weapon, assemble your forces, and fight for control of the wasteland and the ultimate prize, survival. Fallout Wasteland Warfare is a narrative skirmish war game set in the post-apocalyptic future of the Fallout video game series. Build your own crew of iconic characters from the Fallout series and play in apocalyptic games of 3 to 30 
high quality 32 millimeter scale miniatures. This two player starter set includes everything you need to get started in the world of Fallout and includes rules for two player games, versus or co-op, one player solo play, narrative settlement modes, and competitive battle mode. This is backed up by extensive online content available free from modifius.com slash fallouts, allowing you to take the game even further and conquer the wasteland for your faction. So yes, there are some scenarios that are available for download for free over on modifius.com. I did notice that some of them do rec there. Thank you, Ron Perlman. Yes, Ron Perlman, who uh, we met at uh, San Diego Comic-Con hanging out in this bar that, uh, well, it's it's a barbecue place. Everybody calls it the um, Top Gun Bar. That's not what it's really called. Uh, it uh, There was a scene from Top Gun that was filmed there, but uh, it's kind of off to the side, off the beaten path. So a lot of times at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, we'll go over there and have a few beers and stuff like that. And he, Ron Perlman was sitting there smoking a cigar. So we sat there talking to him. We were with uh, a couple of my friends uh, who are comic book artists. Well, they're comic creators, I guess we'll say. The Phil Bach brothers. And uh, they always wear all black and cowboy hats. And Ron Perlman was just <laughs> busting their chops over that. Okay, so let's take a look, see what we've got. So we've got, it uh, looks like this is the uh, rule book here. Or at least an intro here. Maybe this is like a tutorial. Because it's pretty short, I can tell you that much. Oh, we got an errata. So we've got a punch board with a lot of various different tokens on it. So it looks like we've got fire, we've got ammunition. Got a little, uh, almost like vault numbers. Got little plus ones, like helmets. Maybe those that represents armor. We've got a uh, little ruler, a little measuring stick there so we've got uh wrenches or spanners as uh, i know the brits like to call it got some other kind of like uh range bands there kind of i guess maybe i wonder if like some of the weapons are like color coded i wouldn't be surprised if maybe they're color coded because we've got orange that's red even though they're pretty close pretty similar there Got yellow, blue, and green. So that's a possibility. Got some letters running down the sides here. So we got one punch board. Got another punch board. Another set of these. Oh, this kind of kind of worn here. That's not cool. Got a little bit of that too here. Mm hmm. Well. Unless that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe it's supposed to be that way because it is after the apocalypse, after all. So uh, we got some exclamation points. We've got little pit boys here with uh, looks like they've got little helmets on there. Got little almost like little bang markers. Some of them have two on here. Maybe it's hits, maybe hit markers. All right, so we've got that. Then we've got, oh, looks like a play mat. A couple of play mats, actually. Yeah, these dual-sided? No, just single-sided here. So uh, it's got a bit of a finish on it, so that's cool. So it's like uh, just a highway, highway area here. So that's one of the mats. Let's see what we got here. like maybe ruins of a building or something yeah, more road more roadway here so so we got these two like I said they, it has a bit of a has a bit of a finish to it so these should hold up pretty well it's not just untreated paper so that is cool here so we've got there's the rules of play and the campaign handbook so let's look through some of these books. Let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna move this off to the side. Grab another quick sip here. So 
So let's take a look here. We've got, uh, well, we got the <laughs> errata there. We don't need to worry about that. Let's take a look here at the uh, the tutorial. So it's talking about finding your feet, measuring. So yeah, these are range rulers here, it seems. Okay, navigating the wastes. You take the Soul Survivor model. You're special. Talking about your attributes. Then talking about shooting and shooting range. Yep, there you go. 10 millimeter pistol. Showing that. Hey, super mutant. You got up close and personal. Weird harvest. Your new best friends. And then solving the rat problem. So these are investigation markers. Okay. All right. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so that's the tutorial. Now we got the rules of play. Now the rules of play is uh, almost like a soft cover book here. So it is bound a little bit differently than you know, most game books that we run across, rule books. So it looks like we've got quite a few pages here. It looks like we've got about 54 pages. It's 2287. And from the ashes of nuclear devastation, a new civilization will struggle to rise. The combatants have changed, but war, war never changes. So we've got an introduction to Fallout. Assembling your models. Now, this looks like they're showing you the resin models here because this starter box has plastic PVC figures in it. But the miniatures are also available in resin. And as far as I understand, all the, the add-ons, the uh, various different, uh, like there's Brotherhood of Steel add-on that you can get with more miniatures, those are all resin. So the only ones that are plastic only ones that are PVC are the ones that are in the starter kit. Oh, in fact, in fact, right here, it says assembly for PVC. Yep, yep, yep. When you got plastic figures, you got to wash them with detergent a little bit. And then uh, we'll have to see how solid these are. See if there's any anything that's bent, anything that needs to be like you have to boil it in hot water to reset the plastic. So we'll have to take a look. So it's showing you how to paint your models. Fully equipped, talking about different equipment cards. Leaving the vaults. See, I'm so old school, I go all the way back to the original Fallout. I loved that game. That game was awesome. Getting started in the wasteland. Here's the color ranges. So we've got orange, yellow, red, green, blue, and black. So there are all different ranges. Skill tests. So you're going to have uh, character cards. We've got skill dice. It's like we've got, uh, it's like 20 sided and 12 sided, but they all have unique symbols on them. Talking about the die icons. Oh, so those little, uh, little explosion counters are extra damage, reducing armor. The uh, subtractions are mine, uh, subtraction to your bonus skill or subtraction to your skill, I guess. So got units and models. There's good old dog meat. Oh, yeah. Overview of a round. Taking your actions. So we've got movement actions, shooting actions. Taking damage, armor, combat damage and armor, an example, charging, close combat, okay, and then we got searching the wasteland, use expertise, scavenging, because uh, as I had mentioned, this is, this is a narrative skirmish game. So it's not just your typical fighting it out just with uh, minis. So Dan had asked, uh, 79 
US, it's yeah, it's seventy nine ninety nine, which was I thought kind of an oddball, uh, kind of oddball cost. So uh, notice we had a quick frame drop there. So yeah, plus shipping. It is yeah, plus shipping. So let's see if we're. All right, looks like uh, we just had a little hiccup there. So, if, yep, we should be okay. Just talking about different items. Getting ready for action. <laughs> Pip-Boy with his baseball bat, okay. Getting ready for some action there. Uh, battle cry. Oh, so it's talking about, I guess, is that a skill? Yeah, it says battle cry skill to intimidate enemies. It's talking about terrain, edge of the battlefield. I would take a stab that this this is probably going to be in the order of uh, medium complexity as far as uh, miniatures games go. The tools of war. So, action throwing. Talking about power armor, advanced weapons, wasteland heroes. So we've got advanced units and models. Luck, critical attacks. Summary of all the markers. Wow, there are a lot of arm of markers here. So the little helmets with the uh, the number in it are armor boosts. Radiation damage. Oh, slow firing is what the the ammo token looks like. We got an index of icons. Wow, that is a lot of icons. Got an index, and then we got a quick reference. So that is the rule book. Let's take a look at the campaign book real quick. Campaign handbook. Uh, try to avoid some spoilers. Just kind of flip through here. So we got Survivors, Super Mutants, Brotherhood of Steel. So we've got Into the Wasteland, Against the Wasteland, Settling Down. We've got Scenarios. Well, that's pretty cool. That's pretty nicely done there. So it talks about event cards. Quests. we got Against the Wasteland, Solo and Co-op Modes. Activating AI models. I want to say I thought I ran across the um, on the Modifius site. I th I think there's some expanded AI downloads. <coughs> so Dan says looks really cool, but the price point is scary. It's got miniatures. That's how it usually works. Plus, it's Fallout, so. You know, there's that whole licensing there. So we got some other rules for AI play. Settling down. This must be the settlements. Yep, building settlements. After a battle. Structures. An example of a settlement. Then we got the scenarios. Let's see what we got. Creating your force, setting up your force. Battlefield setup, standalone scenarios. Super duper sweep. And we got link scenarios. Defending the farm. News hound. Hurt locker. Reinforcements have arrived. Hold the fort. Then we got AI scenarios. Smash and grab. Cut off the head. Loot the area. Escort the Brahmin. Then we've got tutorial scenarios. Oh, okay. That's cool. Trouble beginnings. Fort Davis, Water Treatment Plant, Lost Journal, the Coming Storm, and we've got Scenario Outcomes, Win or Lose. That's kind of cool. All right, and then the anatomy of the cards themselves, the breakdown of the cards. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in a bit because we're going to look at the cards. We're going to look at some of the dice. And then, of course, we're going to look at the minis.
Okay, so let's yeah, we can get a little closer in. All right, so we've got the cards and the dice. So let's look at these dice real quick here. So as I mentioned, it looked like we had 12s and 10s. So these are 12s. Some of them are a little different sizes, too. There's our 20. 20 cider. Got a, a plus sign on on some of the faces. Got eyes. Little, little eyes on some. Got little blasts on some. Okay. And we got... Uh, Oh, this is an averaging die, so it's a one through four. So that's a an averaging die right there. And we've got some that are negatives. Got like losing armor. I have no I have no idea. It looks like a bottle of something there. So these are all negatives there, more negatives. Looks like there's a lot of armor. Maybe that's a hit, maybe this is a miss. So we've got the yellow dice. They look like they're identical. We've got the black dice. Which this die actually seems to be... Almost looks like it's a little smaller than this die. I don't know. But uh, these are all unique. These are all a little bit different. Now this has all the like the bottles on it. it almost looks like a genie bottle. And some stars. Got a little mushroom cloud here. That's kind of funny. So we've got two blue, two yellow, two black, two green, a red, which is like an averaging die because it's one through four. And then this odd 20 cider, which looks like it goes up to eight. I see a lot of, I see six, seven, eight, five, three, some of these icons in that. So those are the dice. That's cool. At least you're getting, you know, actual custom dice as opposed to, well, if you roll a five, it's this. The bottle is Nuka Cola. Yeah, I bet you that's, I, I bet you're right. I bet you're right, Dan. I bet you it's supposed to be Nuka Cola. Maybe you roll that when you're scavenging or something. So then we've got a lot of little cards here. And it looks like we've got quite a few different decks. So we'll kind of peek through. Let's see what we've got. So we've got heroic. There's only a few of those. We've got oh, looks like these are looks like these cards are from scenarios or something here. So we've got explore, event, we've got leader. There's only four of those. We've got perks. We've got danger. Quite a few. Well, I guess maybe not. Creature. There's only three of those, I guess. Stranger. Three of those. <laughs> Boost. It's all these little cards. All these different cards. I have not played the uh, Fallout Fantasy Flight games release. But my understanding is it that's got a bunch of different cards in it as well. So we got items. Looks like we got a, quite a lot of item cards here. We're not gonna look through every single one, but we'll kind of take a peek. So we got hunting rifle, 10 millimeter pistol, dog bite. <laughs> it's for dogs only. Baseball bat, pipe pistol. I get a kick out of how. Pip Boy is in all of these with a little different assault rifle, a little different artwork. Although hunting rifle and assault rifle is the same artwork on it. Sledgehammer, combat shotgun, bolt action pipe rifle. Uh, Stealth Boy, Stuffed Bunky, Cap Stash, Economy Wonder Glue, Desk Fan. So some items that you could run across. Sturdy leather armor, sweet. Stim packs. So these are all the various different items. I'm sure you shuffle these up and this is what you're finding when you're scavenging. Or maybe when you beat, uh, if you're playing co-op, 
or even solitaire uh, when you beat some of the enemies. Uh, Paul Nolan says it does. Uh, I like the game very much and it plays soul very well. Talking about the uh, fantasy like games fallout game. Yeah, I know. I Unfortunately, I don't really have much of a connection with Fantasy Flight anymore. So uh, once Asmodee bought them out and uh, I, you know, my contacts weren't great in the first place. So collect the bounty. Who was the killer? Where's the killer? Indies freezing. 44. Find the watch. So I would think maybe some of these cards here depending on what scenario you're playing, actually have these on the side. So for an example, Handy Delivery Part 1. There's a Part 2. A Bet's a Bet. The Thief's Trail Part 2B. 2A. Part 1. So that's where I'm going to take a guess. That's how that works. we got a few little perk cards. Gun Nut. Rifle. Gun Nut Pistol. Blacksmith. Armor. Local Leader. So we got those. Got explore cards. What's that dog meat? Gun for hire. Flying ant swarm. Unexpected presence at the refinery. Swap mart. Okay, cool. Stranger danger. That's why it's got a red card. Wandering merchants. Field medic. Wounded farmer. Well, they don't sound bad. Got that. We got creatures, mole rat tunnel, rad roach nest, opportunist mongrel. Okay, so we got some of the danger cards. Rig to blow, containment leak, creature, draw and resolve a creature card. Shocking, rogue Eve bot, or I bot, I should say. Not Eve bot. It's an I bot. So we got some leader cards. Brawler, Hunter, Wasteland Searcher, Warden, some Boost Cards, Powerful Attack, Carefully Does It, Use Your Body, Take Two, okay, got the Heroic Cards, there's only like three of these, four of these, uh, so it's just giving you different symbols, they all look identical though so i don't know i don't know what that was supposed to mean and then we got some events dust cloud lightning storm unbearable heat a neutral party diamond city radio okay so these are all the smaller cards that make up all these various little decks so I'll move those out of the way and then we'll take a look at the actual character cards I see we've got that alien right on top so it's interesting we've got all these cards but we don't have all these minis so uh, let's take a look so we got the alien soul survivor it's the female character here Oh, so. Oh, well, that's kind of wild. We got two cards for the Soul Survivor. Cardstock's fine. Cardstock's okay. So we have Soul Survivor Day One. Yep, so. I wouldn't be surprised if. Excuse me, you're utilizing Soul Survivor Day One for, say, the tutorial. The tutorial missions. Settler, enslaved tech, dog meat, hooray! Mutant hound, super mutant, brute, aviator, death claw. Oh yeah, the death claws. Aspirant Goddard, mutant hound, hound bite, super mutant, bolt action, pipe rifle, and board. Death Claw. So these are almost. They're kind of. It's kind of weird. 
kind of a strange kind of layout here. Almost like um, like an attack table of some sort. I, obviously, these are die rolls here. Huh. Okay. So he's the brute, aviator, soul survivor, day one, dog meat, Spurring Goddard, enslaved tech, settler, alien blaster. And we've got a couple of cards here. I was thinking, oh, these are all character cards, but they're not. Uh, so we've got a couple of player aid cards here. Faction survivors. Faction super mutants. And then we've got AI responses. So AI response target priorities, objective and defend, attack, and move and fall back. Okay, so we've got these cards. So we've got those two decks now. Let's dive on in and start checking out the miniatures. So we've got, got a dozen miniatures here. So obviously the green are the super mutant faction and the gray are the survivors. So we'll take a look at these one by one. So first off, let's take a look at the death claw. So as I had mentioned before, you know, we probably zoom in just a touch more. Oops little too much. There we go. This is PVC plastic. So the sculpt detail is pretty good, but and I tell you right now, I can guarantee for a fact that the sculpt detail on the resin models is probably better. So Dan says, both my son and I are big fans of Fallout, and this is very tempting. Mm-hmm. Well, I should have a review of it. Well, I can't say necessarily soon, but within a couple of weeks, I should have a review of it. So that is the Death Claw. This is a little bonus alien guy. Bonus alien. So that would be this guy here. I mean, I I can see that there's there's good detail to it, but I like I said, I can tell that it's just because with PVC plastic, you you can't get the same kind of detail that you can from metal miniatures or even resin miniatures. Okay, so plastic's a little soft, but it's not too bad. So this is one of the super mutants. So that is this guy right here. All right, looks like we've got a uh, mutant hound or like radi <laughs> a radiated hound, some sort of dog. He's got a couple of these. So, there's this one here. Hey, boy. See, this is what happens if you don't make a donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund. Animals turn out like this. Uh, so we got two different sculpts. So here's a different sculpt. It's like the thing's tongue is hanging out there. So that is another mutated hound. All right, we got another super mutant here. See, this is this is the problem that we run into with plastic miniatures. Uh, this is bent. And the only way you're gonna get this to stay straightened is if you boil water and you put this, not the whole, you don't have to put the whole thing in, but you would have to dip this in to the boiling water to try to 
uh, get this to soften up so you can straighten it out and then have to leave it where it's like up against something so that when it solidifies, it's going to be in a straight line like that. Uh, so that's something you run across with plastic. Uh, for the most part, the rest of the figures are pretty stiff because a lot of times with some of the really soft plastic, you have to uh, have to apply like a varnish to stiffen it up. So, there we go. It's the other super mutant. And then one more. This is the, I think this was the aviator mutant that they were showing. Because he's kind of wearing like uh, aviator goggles. So. So those are, and there's some skulls hanging. This thing's got skulls hanging off his belt. So those are the super mutants. Now let's take a look at the survivors. And let's start off with dog meat. There you go, here's dog meat. Yeah, I would say dog meat's face has some fairly soft detail to it. You might not be able to tell all that well, but uh, not terrible, but I'm just, it's, the detail's just kind of soft. So, all right, then we've got... Do I paint miniatures, Dan? I used to paint miniatures all the time. I have not actually painted miniatures in... Uh, it's been a few years. I would actually like to maybe do like a series of uh, just... Because I did a video where I... Because I was going to do a series where it was all about painting minis. And uh, I did... The first episode was basically just kind of tools of the trade. Stuff that you wanted to get. Uh, get your hands on. I mean, and I'm not talking super expensive stuff. Most expensive thing you want to pick up are your brushes. Um, so, I mean, even when I would paint miniatures, I would actually paint with a lot of the acrylics that you can get at at uh, Walmart because they were so cheap and then I'd just thin them with uh, distilled water. But, uh, yeah, actually, interestingly enough, and it's on the Gaming Gang website, my best friend Elliot Miller over at VoiceOfE.com, who's actually finally posting stuff again, uh, He uh, he's a huge fan of Arkham Horror. So Mansions of Madness came out and we both got copies from Fantasy Flight Games to review because at that point in time, Elliot was part of the gaming gang. And I told him, hey, you know, if you want, I'll paint your minis. I said, what I can do is I'll paint the miniatures I've got here. You just send me your miniatures from your box and I'll just ship out the ones that I painted. So I painted all the miniatures that were in Manches of Madness and did a really nice job, and he was just, you know, knocked out by the whole thing. And so, basically, he had his own uh, just one-of-a-kind, you know, copy of Mansions of Madness, and then he was hard up for cash a few years later, and he sold it. I was like, oh, yeah, I ought to... I was like, dude, you could have just given me the minis back, because I still have Mansions of Madness. I've <laughs> been like, I'll give you the other mi minis back. I can at least have the ones that I painted. So here I can see there's a little bit of a bend with his rifle here too. So a lot of times with the uh, plastic that's that's a little little more stiff, got to be real careful that you know if you're trying to like straighten stuff out without actually heating up that plastic in the boiling water, because uh, you can snap it off, and that's not good. So. How would it? How long would it take to paint something like the Death Claw? Well, all depends. Um, I'll pull the Death Claw out in a sec. We only have. Uh, we've got this miniature. This is the sole survivor. It looks like. For a second, I'm like she's carrying a broom, because it almost looked like a broom on her shoulder. But it's not. It's a rifle. So I'm like, what the hell is she doing with a broom? So there she is. She's the sole survivor there. 
then we've got the Brotherhood of Steel. It's the only figure that's uh, it's a Brotherhood of Steel miniature. Although, like I said, there is a resin set. And I noticed that uh, Modifius is selling a lot of the extra sets with bundles, too. So you can actually get the core game as well as the, uh, the extra miniatures. Now, as I pointed out before, they do have resin minis for all 12 of these miniatures that come in the basic set. And I think they're, in, they're like 55, 58, something like that. So, anyway, so that's to kind of give you an idea here. That's our Brotherhood of Steel and the power armor. So those are the miniatures here. I'll pull out the Death Claw again and uh, kind of give you an idea as far as how you, you know, how you normally paint stuff. So what you, what you normally do is you paint from the inside out. So the first thing you would do, you'd prime this. You'd get this, this all primed. And then you would, you would probably go and you would probably paint the mouth and the teeth. Might go in there for the eyes. Paint that stuff up. And then you would probably lay down a bit of a wash for whatever darker color that you would want uh, to have, like, the shadows. Because I know a lot of people paint their miniatures and they all have, like, these black outlines on everything. I'm not a fan of that. I know it... Some people really dig that because it really makes things stand out, makes details stand out. To me, it looks just too unrealistic. So, like, a lot of times you'll see um, characters' miniatures painted where they're, like, their eyes. Or, like, they have a mustache. Maybe they've got a mustache. Well, there's, like, a little black line around their mustache to make that mustache stick out. Well, to me, that looks silly. I would, I would prefer to use... A darker flesh colored wash to get a bit of a shadow going and then paint the uh then paint the mustache but something like this all depends i mean you know how much detail you want to get into it because what you could do is for the most part depending on the color scheme uh you could put a base coat of the color that uh is the skin then do a wash where it's just a little bit darker than that so that like Areas that uh, the wash would go into will come out a little bit darker. Then I would always take like an old brush. It's called dry brushing. Take an old brush and dip it into a little bit lighter color. Take, you know, wipe it off so you got almost all of the paint off. And then you kind of just brush it across. And uh, that will kind of lift up some of the detail. It'll, it'll provide a little bit of a lighter color and stuff. But uh, painting something like this... Normally, what I would do is I would probably have all the miniatures at one time. And I would just kind of do probably assembly line on them. So, uh, so that you're not just working on one miniature all the time. So, but if you were just painting this, and if you had a blow dryer that you were blow drying some of the, some of the uh, paint to dry it up a little quicker, a couple hours... I mean, I mean, that's me. I mean, it probably take me about two hours, three hours to paint that to uh, tabletop quality. I mean, we're not talking something that's going to be in, you know, Golden Demon Awards or anything like that. But all right. So let me put that back in there. Let's zoom back out a little bit as we put everything back in. So we've got the miniatures. Go. So we got the minis. We've got the two uh, mats, two battle mats. We've got the two punch boards of all the tokens and the rulers as I put stuff in here without putting the cards back in. Dummy. Or the dice. Dummy. Uh, dice, I think, were here. These cards will go in here. So we got the little decks there. We've got the character cards as well as the looks like almost like skill cards. Those were up. Oh, those went in here. There we go. Uh, I don't know what 
went in there. Maybe nothing was in there. Maybe that was open. Let's get that back in here. I'll make sure I turn these so these don't get broken. So there we go. So we got the uh, the battle mats. We got two punch boards of the rulers and the markers. We got the errata. We've got the little tutorial. We've got the campaign handbook. And we've got the rules of play. And that is what we find when we take everything from Fallout, Wasteland Warfare, outside the box, from Bethesda Game Studios and Modifius Entertainment. As I pointed out, this is available now. Uh, I think it did really, really well. So I don't... I don't know how easy it is to track down, but it does carry an MSRP of $77.99. Here's something that I ran across. I do not know if it is still around or still going on or not, but I did see it on Amazon and it was about $52, $54, something like that. But then again, you know, not so sure who might be selling that on Amazon. So you kind of kind of roll the dice a little bit on Amazon. Of course, a lot, uh, lot easier to track stuff down. <laughs> well, I should say, um, I would find I have much more confidence in receiving an item from uh, ordering through Amazon than I would eBay. I don't do eBay anymore. So anyway, so I will have a review of Fallout War. I, I keep wanting to say uh, Warfare first. It's Wasteland Warfare in the very near future. So as I mentioned also on tomorrow's show, I will be reviewing City of Gears from Gray Fox Games. All right, so that is it for today's show. I see we're dropping frames again. Hmm. Kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here tonight. So anyway, that's it for tonight's show. As I like to always point out, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, please be sure to go visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff MacLear. For those of you who popped into chat, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Those of you watching after the fact, of course, thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching. And